as you can see, some of the TPS potato plants have begun blooming prolifically. And it's pretty much so far just the diploid potatoes that are blooming right now. And they are really, really impressing me. I have never had this many diploids before and um, I'm thinking it's a really good idea to have them around. First of all, they're beautiful. You can see, for whatever reason, the diploids have just intensely colorful flowers for the most part. Although there are some... white flowered ones, but most of them are these very intense shades of purple and pink, magenta, really impressively attractive. And they are loaded with pollen. And one of the benefits of them being loaded with pollen is they're highly attractive to uh, wild pollinators, especially bumblebees and the little helictid bees like mason bees and uh, other solitary um, bees. I've particularly seen a species of very small, bright, metallic green bee um, pollinating these flowers. And I, I haven't been able to get any footage of it yet, but um, they're, they're very interested in the potato pollen. And you can see I think on some of these flowers you see the little brownish markings on the anthers. Those are basically bite marks from the mandibles of the bees as they are pollinating the flower. Because what they do is they grab the anther with their mandibles and then vibrate their wing muscles to shake the pollen out of the anther cone and uh, it leaves these characteristic uh, bite marks on the anther. And <clears throat> you can pretty much see that's happening to most of the flowers as they're maturing. And you can also tell they're getting effectively pollinated by all of the berries that are getting established on these plants. And so it's really neat to see. And I also feel like having these early flowering diploids is going to just increase the potato cross-pollination in the whole patch because as the tetrapoids start flowering, we'll already have a group of wild bees that are attracted to and trained to come here for potato pollen. And many of the tetrapoids also that I'm growing have a lot of pollen in them. So they will also be attracted, <coughs> attractive to the bees, but uh, they will also be attractive to the bees. Um, and having these early flowers has just, you know, set the stage for a lot of good pollination events. Um, I'm not really terribly interested in hand pollinating um, potatoes. I've done it. It's very fiddly and having the bees do that work for me is just way more interesting because I'm not particularly concerned with having uh, specific genetic crosses being tracked uh, in my potato, you know, growing. I, I find selection of the best individuals, regardless of their pedigree, is just works fine as far as I'm concerned. So if I can get the bees to do all the crossing, I'll just have lots and lots and lots of potato seeds to select from. So that's great. And, uh, yeah. And the other thing, diploid potatoes are not fantastic pollinators, 
of tetraploid potatoes, but it does occur to a small degree because potatoes have this genetic tendency to have unreduced gametes, which means uh, when the uh, sexual uh, gametes are being produced, meiosis doesn't occur properly, and so you end up with a certain percentage of the, the gametes being um, not haploid, but being, uh, have the full diploid genome. And so an unreduced diploid gamete is essentially the exact same type of pollen that tetrapoid, normal tetrapoid pollen is. So a unreduced diploid gamete can pollinate and successfully produce a seed on a tetrapoid potato plant, if that makes any sense. And so not only will these diploid plants be attractive to the bees and train the bees to pollinate my tetrapoid potatoes, they will also potentially produce a limited amount of gene flow from the, the diploids to the tetraploids. Um, and so it's just really exciting to see. And if things keep going as they're going, I'm going to have a ton of diploid potato seed for next year because I just have already, there's about 30 berries set on and they've only been flowering for a very brief period. And uh, so, yeah, it's very exciting and interesting. So I thought I'd point that out. I don't have any tetraploids flowering yet, but I've got basically this entire row of beautiful diploids. So it's very cool. All right, thanks a lot for watching.